in the next hour or so, I'm going to try and give you an overview of uh, what I understand about free will, the argument about whether we are free to determine our actions, or rather if the universe sort of conspires against us and actually prevents us making free choices and actually determines everything we do. A um, little disclaimer, before I start this lecture, I should just say that um, due to time constraints, I've really not read much about this. So what I'm what I'm doing for you in this in this half lecture is um, I'm going over what was presented last year. I'm representing it in my own words and, and phrases. Um, but I'm I'm not going to claim to know a lot about this topic. I apologize for that. And it's um, it's really just it's a matter of there's just not enough time this year to do everything. So uh, with that, with that pretty big caveat, let me try and explain um, the outlines of the free will problem. So in the first part of the lecture, I'm just going to have a quick recap of some of the ideas that we've come across already, some of the people we've come across already, and what they might have said about free will, and just sort of frame the question in terms of what we've already heard about. And then the second half, I'm going to give you four accounts of the, the problem of free will. And these four are libertarianism, hard determinism, compatibilism, and impossibilism or illusionism. Uh, these may all be uh, new words to you. They're certainly mostly new words to me. And your main aim for this part of the lecture is to just to identify three or four different positions on free will and to briefly evaluate them and, and describe them. So as you sit in front of your screen or listening to your device or maybe you're asleep, um, you may wonder, why exactly are you here? You've all chosen to be here, I think. Um, you, you may have freely chosen to be here because you could be doing something else. You could be watching TV or you could be doing another course entirely. You could be living somewhere else. You could be doing something else entirely with your life. So. Although you may have chosen to be here today, how exactly was that choice determined by all the other things, all the other factors in your life and all the other factors in your current environment? And that's the question of free will. Why exactly are we here doing what we're doing now rather than doing something else? And the concept of free will is, is pretty important in many uh, fields of, of life. And I think we all have an intuitive understanding, just like the mind body problem, the free will problem, is, is kind of, we have an intuitive grasp of what it is. So in economics, free freedom of trade and freedom of um, commerce is really important. That people have, you know, free choices to, um, to choose to, to buy one thing or another thing. In justice and the police, uh, free will is pretty important. Um, we, we assume that people act under their own free will and that when they break the law, they do so knowingly and freely and then we punish them for them if they do the wrong thing and in religion of course you're free to follow the uh, the beliefs of the religious system or you're perhaps free to ignore them so i think on free will we mostly all feel that we have it and we all think we know what it is um, but actual definitions of free will are quite hard to come by as you know many philosophical problems are and a number of concepts that um that may be important the idea of intentional agency. So an, ag an agent is, you know, a, a thing, a person who acts, who does something. Uh, an intention, they intend to do things. So an agent is this a person who sort of starts or, or starts things or does things. And the idea about having agency, intentional agency, is that we are a product of our beliefs, our desires and intentions. Our character, our personality is, it's about all of these things. There's another concept about an open future. Although the past is fixed, so we can't change the past, we don't have time machines, um, but the idea of freedom is that there are many different possible futures. So by changing what we do today, we could, we could lead to many different possible futures. Another important concept in free will is the idea of ultimate responsibility. So if we have free will, then what we do can't be determined by others. It may be influenced by others, but ultimate responsibility for our actions lies with ourselves. So these are some of the background concepts that might be important when thinking about free will. Now we're going to go a bit more into the sort of philosophical ideas. So philosophically, there arises a problem. 
in general, we tend to believe two pretty clear but slightly contradictory things. The first is that we all freely choose our own behaviour, and that's free will. And the second, assuming that we're sort of agreeing with a generally materialistic and sort of deterministic physical universe, we're pretty confident that every event in the universe has a particular cause or set of causes. And this is determinism. But how are they both possible? They seem to be, in fact, incompatible and contradictory. So how can we sort of wangle our way philosophically out of this problem? Are both these things true? Are there alternatives to number one and number two being true? We're going to try and find out in the next half hour or so. I've adapted this nice figure from Richard's lectures last year. And this sort of flow diagram sets up the four different positions that we're going to be talking about, as well as the different main decisions that you have to make in order to find out what kind of a belief in free will you have. So the two questions you need to ask are in the, the white boxes of this figure. At the top, determinism, true or false, and in the middle, free will, true or false. So it's possible to take a true or false perspective on both of these questions. Is the universe deterministic? Yes or no? And if the universe is deterministic, then do we have free will within within that deterministic universe? And that's also asked, yes or no. So the four positions we're going to talk about, I mentioned them already once, uh, libertarianism, hard determinism, compatibilism, and impossibilism. So the question on determinism can be answered false, in which case the universe is not deterministic, everything's free, uh, and there's really, that's it, that's it, everything's free, and there's no need, there's no contradiction there's no problem about you know, having free will or not having free will because the universe is not a deterministic system. And so animals and humans, as complex as they are, can still go around making free decisions undetermined by the universe. So that's pretty easy. The libertarian position rejects the possibility that the universe is a determinist, causal sort of place. And when when I was trying to understand this, I thought, of, thought about these positions relative to the mind-body problem, and I think they all have sort of a, a matching kind of approach. So libertarianism, for me, is a bit like mind-body parallelism. So there may be, you know, there's a material universe which is operating on its own, and then there's the free agents operating on their own, and these two things are not sort of causally, causally related and causally interacted. So agents can wander around the material world basically doing as they please. The alternative is to say that the universe is a deterministic one. So everything in the universe follows standard physical cause and effect rules. Then you have a problem. Then you need to decide on the, the critical distinction in this field, which is whether free will is compatible with this deterministic universe or not. If you don't think that human brains can have free will in, in a completely deterministic universe, then you're forced into the hard determinism box. That's the red box on the screen. Uh, and that's a form of incompatibilism because you think free will is incompatible with a deterministic universe. So the hard determinists think the universe is completely determined, there's no free will, and that's it. Alternatively, you can take what seems to be quite a compromise position, and that's to say that, yes, the universe is determinist, so it follows physical laws of cause and effect. But humans still have free will. Human agents, and maybe animal agents, still have the freedom to choose alternative pathways. And I put that in a uh, purple magenta colour there, because it's sort of half blue, half red. So those are the three main positions, and there's actually, if you look at philosophical web pages, as I've, as I've tried to do, there are loads of other versions of these slight nuances and just like the mind-body problem this problem hasn't been solved um, so this diagram is all all i want you to know about free will but be aware that there are lots of other alternatives the fourth one that we're going to mention is sort of a rejection of the possibility of free will completely it's sort of more a bit like the eliminative materialist just says we're asking the wrong questions and free will is just an impossible idea and it's not really about determinism versus free will. It's more about determinism versus just randomness and just no order at all in the universe. So the impossibilists would rather say that 
either we ask whether there's a determinist universe or a random universe. So four positions, libertarian, complete free will, hard determinism is completely no free will, uh, compatibilism is a compromise position and that's going to have to be worked out, and the impossibilism is just saying we're asking the wrong question uh, and free will is, is a sort of pointless exercise in linguistics. So that's the philosophical outline. What have various people thought about it uh, in sort of psychology and pre-psychology schools of thought? And in general, throughout this lecture, I'm only going to give you names of people who we've come across before. You can all you can always dig in the literature and find every philosopher in the world has got a position on free will, probably. And so I'm just going to try and limit it to the kind of folks we've talked about before, and then try and relate uh, free will ideas to previous ideas that we've talked about. So the history of free will in, in psychology then is that the Greeks had some thoughts about it. Um, I think they were sort of quite determinists in their, their approach. In medieval times, uh, religion was important uh, and the idea that you have uh, freedom of will in, within, within religion so that you could choose to do good or bad deeds. In the Renaissance, uh, religious scholars started to question freedom and thought about God's omnipotence. So if God knows everything in the universe he or she must know what's going to happen next and if if god knows what's going to happen next then you can't possibly be free so that's that was a new sort of idea coming about in the in the renaissance descartes our french friend he uh, of course talked about mind and body being completely separate so for him he could make a nice distinction that the body is completely determined by physical laws by materialist physical laws but the mind was completely free and that was a nice, easy way to describe uh, the free mind uh, along with the determined body. And as I said, you can dig in the literature and find any other philosophy you like and find a variant of, of, of these views. But three, three English chaps we've heard about before, Darwin, his cousin Galton, and then his bulldog Thomas Huxley, they were all uh, quite sceptical of free will. And you can see where the evolutionary thoughts and the sort of continual chain of being from from bacteria all the way up to humans comes in here so they all thought that they were a bit skeptical of free will and um, believe that animals were sort of automatons or robots just carrying out carrying out their genetic instructions if you like so those three guys are mentioned here because they seem to form a sort of coherent view uh, english evolutionists you could call them who are who don't really believe we have free free will so that's pre-psychology a couple of other folks you've come across in the previous couple of lectures. Uh, William James had some ideas about free will. He was a functionalist, if you remember, so he, he thought that the, the purpose of all of our mental fac faculties was important. So what, what's the function of all these faculties? So William James set up these debates and he distinguished, for example, between choices which were based on sort of rational reasons that come from within ourselves and but they're all determined because the choices we make are um, logical and they they come from our character versus free freedom to choose things and that was more of a chance so there's sort of random random things happening allow us to be free whereas more more rigorous determined rational things give us choices to make and william james also defined the debate between hard and soft determinism and this is sort of uh, used as an insult, usually, I think. So hard determinism is the, the belief that we have no free will at all. And soft determinism is that sort of middle ground, not quite sure of what you believe, and not quite sure how it is that free will is compatible with, with determinism. And Skinner, another American, uh, you heard about him a few weeks ago with his work on behaviorism. So as a behaviorist, a radical behaviorist you might say that we have no free will at all. All our, all our behavior is determined simply by the the stimuli that occur in our environment because we've learned these sort of reflex responses. Okay, that's the summary of the introduction to free will and determinism. Uh, in the next half of the, of the lecture, I'm going to give you four alternative positions. Uh, it's libertarianism, hard determinism, compatibilism, and impossibilism. Uh, each one, like I did before with the mind-body problem, I'm going to give you a one-slide rough description of what it, what they say, uh, one slide of arguments for the position or sort of more details about why they believe that position, and then one slide of arguments against. And hopefully 
you'll have a pretty good view about what are the arguments and what are the positions. There are our friends, our white guys again, and please ask some questions.